Hi everyone, welcome to Sudo Coder. My name is Ravina, and today we are going to solve lead code problem number 42, which is trapping rainwater. So let's start by reading the question. It says that uh, given n non negative integers representing an elevation map where the width of each bar is 1, compute how much water it can trap after raining. So let's see an example here. Uh, we have been given a list of height where there are all non-negative integers in there. And uh, let's look at this height list as, you know, the height of the buildings. Okay. And then here, if you look at this graph, you'll see that all these black box uh, are the buildings. And if it rains he heavily, uh, you know, how much water can the can be trapped between these buildings so that's the question so if you see the between these two buildings this uh, blue thing here is the water that has been trapped uh, between these two there's water trapped in this t shape and there's there's a small puddle here okay so how do we actually uh, you know count the number of units that have been stored right so uh, you'll see that each building is of one unit and if you look at it you know, uh, between these and this building, there is one unit of water stored because it's of width one and then the height of it is one. So it's actually one. If you come here, if you draw boxes around this T, uh, you'll know that you'll understand that there are actually four units of water here. One, two, three, and then the bottom one, which is four. And then there's one right here. So how many it is? One, four, and then one, which is six. And that is our output. So this is, I hope this question was clear and let's move on to the notepad and see how we can solve this. Okay, so I have taken an example, the same example where I have the height right here and then I have drawn the graph. Okay, so uh, how I'm gonna solve this problem is by having two arrays with me, a left max array and a right max array. Now. What are these arrays? So the left max array is going to determine how much maximum water can I store when I go from left to right. And the right max array denotes how much maximum water can I store when I go from right to left. Okay. And then once I have those values, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the minimum of the two and then, uh, you know, uh, subtract the height from it. Now, what does that mean? So for example, so when you come from right to left, suppose your maximum height is here. And when you go from left to right, the maximum height is somewhere here. And if we want to calculate the amount of water that has been stored right here in this particular unit. So what's ha going to happen is you're going to be subtract, you, you're going to be taking the minimum of the two because the amount of water that will, that will be stored will be based on if there's a building that is, you know, uh, that is smaller than the bigger building, then the water stored will be dependent on the smaller one. And that is why we are going to take the minimum of it. And then if that's true, then we take the minimum of it, minimum of it, and we see that there is water stored here, but you'll see that there's a building right here. So we have to subtract the building as well. So that's an overview of the problem. Let's really see how we can solve this. So the first thing I have, I need is my left max array. Okay. And how I'm going to calculate it. The first thing I need to do is initialize it with zero. So I'm going to initialize my whole thing with zero. And then I'm going to have the first element of my array as the first element of my height. So I'm going to take the first element as zero. Why? because there is nothing on the left hand side. So uh, for the margin, I need to have something solid on my left where I have to start from. And so I'm going to take the first element of my height. Now I'm going to calculate it. I, I'm going to calculate the left max area is by taking the maximum of the current height of the building and the previous height of the building. So uh, since I'm calculating the heights as I'm moving forward from left to right, the previous height will be from my left max array. And then I'm going to take the maximum of my left max arrays, previous height and my current height. So let's see. So I'm going to take maximum of zero and one. So maximum of zero and one is one. So it becomes one. Now I take a maximum of zero and one. Again, the maximum is one. I take maximum of two and one, which is two. So it becomes two. 
maximum of zero and two, uh, sorry one and two is two then i again take maximum of my previous uh, building and then my current so zero and two is two now two and one is two maximum of three and two is three two and three is three and then three and one maximum is again three three and two maximum is three and then one and three maximum is three so i've calculated my left max array it's basically maximum of what is the current height and the previous building based on the maximum array that i'm calculating so that is my left array now let's talk about my right array so i'm going to initialize my right array and what i'm going to do i'm for my right array i'm going to move from right to left and for the right hand side i'm going to initialize it with the last element of the height similar thing that we did with the left left array since we did not have anything on the left we took the first building now since we don't have anything on the right we will take the first building from the right now i'm going to do a similar thing i'm going to take the maximum of the building on my right and the current building so let me get rid of these markers here okay so i'm going to take maximum of one and two what is that that is two now i'm going to take maximum of one and two which is two maximum of two and two is again two maximum of three and is going to be three maximum of one and three is going to be three zero and three is going to be three maximum of one and three is again three two and three maximum is three zero and three is maximum three one and three is maximum three and lastly zero and three the maximum here is three so now i have now i have my left and right array what i need to do next is to calculate my answer now let i'm gonna quickly draw and show you what the left and max left max and right max is really okay so uh let's draw the left max array first <clears throat> it's starting at zero okay it's going to one cool it's staying to one one okay and then it's going to two and then it's staying two for four blocks and then again it goes to three and then stays three till the end so this is what the left max array looks like now let's draw on the right max array the right max array actually starts at three oh, sorry my right max array actually starts at one so one and then it goes to two so it goes to two and then stays for two for three instances and then it goes to three and then it stays three till the end so it stays three till here okay so let's see what's happening my left max is the one in purple my right max is the one in orange now if i have to calculate how much water is stored what do you think i have to do uh if you'll see that sometimes the orange marking is the one that is closest sometimes the purple marking is the one that is closest so what do we do we take the minimum of the two when we take the minimum of two we will be able to get to the lowest line and in order to calculate the water so for example let me do this let me draw it out so this is my or, or the orange part is my uh, left uh, my right max and my left max if i take minimum of the two i end up with my purple line okay so i end up with this particular block here okay i'm getting very bad at this i'm ge getting this particular block here does that mean that this is all water um no why why because this there's a building here it's right here this is the building so what we have to do is we have to take minimum of my right and left and then we have to subtract the height of the building so if we do that then we'll see that there's water here which is actually the correct thing did uh, you saw that t thing in the example below that's the left part of it so this is going to be the water and that's how the formula works so what's the formula initially uh, my formula is going to be my minimum of left and right and then i'm going to subtract my height so initially my answer is going to be zero and my answer is going to be zero and now let's work through it so it's going to be minimum of left and right so minimum of uh, zero and three which is zero minus the height which is zero zero minus zero minimum of zero and zero is zero and zero minus zero is zero so it's going to be zero 
Okay, so minimum of one and three is one, and the height of the building is also one. So one minus one, zero. Okay, now minimum of one and three is again one, but this time the height of the building is zero. So one minus zero, one. So I'm going to add one. Now minimum of two and three is two, and then minus two. So two minus two is zero. Okay, so minimum of two and three is two minus one. So it becomes one. Okay, plus minimum of two and three, two again, and then minus zero. So it becomes two. Minimum of two and three is two minus one, which becomes one. So this becomes one. Minimum of three and three is three minus three, zero. So it becomes zero. Now minimum of three and two is two. Two minus two, zero. Minimum of three and two is two. Two minus one is actually one, so one. Now minimum of three and two is two. Minus two is zero. And the minimum of three and one is actually one. And minus the height, which is one, so zero. So let's see what our answer is. It's one plus one, two plus two, four, plus one, five, and then six. So our answer comes out to be six, and that is what we are expecting. That is the solution. So I hope this explanation was clear. Let's see how we can convert this into code. First things first, though we have to look for any edge cases. Now, this problem did not talk about the constraints where you know length of the height cannot be zero. So first thing that we have to think is if my height list is zero, then what do I have to do? I have to return zero because there will be no water. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to uh, actually store my length of height in a variable because I'm going to use it multiple times. That is a very good practice that you can do. Oops, I think I'm doing something wrong. Yeah, so there is a, a best practice that you can do if you are using a variable again and uh, if you are calculating something again and again, store it in a variable. So I have my length n. Now I'm going to check if n is less than one, then I am going to return zero. Now I have to, for uh, how many things do I need? I need three things. I need my answer. I need my left max array. I need my right max array. So I'm going to initialize my answer to zero. My left max array is gonna be initialized to zero with length n. Similarly, my right max array is going to be initialized to zero with length n. Now I have this. I have, now I will start calculating my left max array. For starting, uh, for starters, I have to initialize the first element of a left max with the first element of my height. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do left max of zero is going to be my height of zero. And then I write a for loop starting from the first element uh, from the first index going to the end. So I do for i in range starting from one going till n minus one. And since that is Python, it's going to exclude that last last um, part. So it's going to uh, even if I'm writing n, it's n minus one. And then I'm going to calculate my left max. My left max of i is nothing but left max of my left max of i minus one this is the previous building minus my current height okay now that's all my left max is done let's try it and do it the right part of it so my right max is or uh, my right max's last element is going to be my height's last element and in python you can write just minus one to get the last element so that's that and then i'm going to write my for loop ranging from so i have to start with my second last item similarly how for the left left array i started with my second item right so i'm going to start with my second last item here so it's going to be n minus two i have to go till zero and since the last thing is excluded last index is excluded i'm going to write minus one and for every iteration i have to subtract minus one so that's how you write for loop in Python. And then I am going to do write max of my i 
is going to be really max of my right max of i plus 1. So maximum of the building on the right and then my height. So that's all. My right max is calculated now. So now, finally, I have to calculate my answer. So for that, I have my i in range going from 0 to n. I'm going to calculate my answer. My answer is going to be answer plus my minimum of my left max. Oops. Minimum of my left max of i, my right max of i, minus my height. Okay. In the end, I return the answer. Let's see if we can run it. Okay, let's submit. Okay, yeah, so you see this solution was accepted. Now let's talk about the space and time complexity of this problem. So uh, if you talk about the space complexity, you can see that we are using three for loops here, which are not nested, they are independent. So each time the space complexity is n plus n plus n, which is 3n, and then we drop the constant. So the time complexity of this is O of n. Now let's talk about the space complexity. How much space are we using? We have a variable here. We have a variable here which, is, which stores constant. And then my left and right max, which is actually an array of size n. And what is this n? n is the length of the height. So it's going to be O of 1 plus O of n plus O of n, which is going to be 1 plus 2n. And uh, if you know that you know in time and space complexity we actually drop the constants so the space complexity of this becomes o of n if you don't know how to calculate space and time complexity i have created a video on it uh, i think two weeks before i will include the link in the description below and you can refer that it will be much easier to calculate space and time complexity if you watch that video so uh, to conclude it the space and time complexity of this particular algorithm is o of n if you like my videos, give it a thumbs up, comment below. If you want me to solve any additional problems of your choice, please let me know in the comments below. You can also connect with me on my Discord and let me know there. If you want to see similar videos from me, please subscribe to my channel uh, so that it, it can give you a notification every time I upload a new video. I upload videos every week. So uh, have a nice day and I will see you next time. Thank you. Bye.